Today we have brought you the latest Tesla news. Tesla introduces mobile megacharger for Semi in Las Vegas. Tesla hires new manufacturing executive to lead elusive Giga Nevada expansion. Tesla owner compares hardware 3 and hardware 4 cameras, and there is a big difference in video quality. And, Tesla installs sixth, but most significant V4 supercharger station at Giga Berlin. Let's get into all the details. So let's get started. Tesla introduced a mega charger in Las Vegas for a few hours before it was evident it was actually a mobile mega charger as the unit was packed up and moved. The mega charger is the dedicated charging unit for the Tesla Semi and features a 750 kilowatt charging rate for the Class 8 all electric truck. The mega charger is not a widely available charging unit as the product is currently confined to various areas in the western portion of the United States. It is used by PepsiCo and Frito-Lay at their distribution plants in Northern California. Last week, we covered PepsiCo and their use of the semi, as well as how their megacharger setup at their plant in Sacramento has complemented their business. It appears Tesla is using a mobile megacharger unit, and it briefly appeared in Las Vegas recently. Just a few hours after it was first spotted, it was packed and moved. In the past, Tesla has used mobile superchargers to add more charging stalls at certain locations. They were first used in November 2019, near San Luis Obispo, California. Last week, it was reported by Bloomberg that Tesla was seeking nearly $100 million in funding from the U.S. government to build a corridor of megachargers from California to Texas. Moving to the next update, Tesla hires new manufacturing executive to lead elusive Giga Nevada expansion. Tesla has hired a new manufacturing executive from Eli Lilly to lead its elusive Gigafactory Nevada expansion. Tesla Gigafactory Nevada was the first major step in Tesla's effort to secure battery cell supply for its ambitious growth. The automaker partnered with Panasonic to deploy new battery cell production capacity at the facility, and Tesla used those cells to build battery packs for its vehicles and energy storage products. When originally announcing the plan for the factory, Tesla was talking about the plant, producing 105 gigawatt hour of battery cells per year and 150 gigawatt hour of battery packs per year, once completed it was supposed to become the largest building in the world. However, the factory is currently about 30% complete, and Tesla hasn't expanded the facility for years, as both the automaker and Panasonic have focused on optimizing the current production capacity. Tesla hasn't expanded the footprint of the factory in five years at this point, as it focused on optimizing this one and building new ones that include vertically integrated vehicle production. Last year, Electrek reported that Tesla finally planned to start adding new sections to the factory. A few months later, Tesla announced a massive expansion of Gigafactory Nevada to add production of Tesla semi-trucks and 4680 battery cells and to finally expand the factory to its originally planned size. However, it has been eight months since this announcement and Tesla has yet to start work on a single new section of the factory. It's not clear what the holdup is, but we now learn that Tesla has hired a new experienced manufacturing executive to lead the effort. Last month, Tesla hired Michael Hildebrandt in the role of head of Giga Factory Nevada Expansion, Engineering and Construction, according to his LinkedIn profile. Hildebrand is coming from almost three decades in the pharmaceutical industry, where he led many manufacturing projects, most recently at Eli Lilly, where he was executive director of projects. Hopefully, it means that we are going to start to see some progress on the expansion at Gigafactory Nevada soon, as it is critical to the Tesla Semi and 4680 cell program. Moving to the next update, Tesla owner compares hardware 3 and hardware 4 cameras, and there is a big difference in video quality. Tesla released their latest self-driving computer, known as Hardware 4, earlier this year, on the Model S and Model X, later expanding it to the Model Y. 
Not only is there a new computer, but also updated cameras, and based on a video comparing the footage to the previous hardware 3 cameras, the difference in quality is substantial. The comparison was put together by an FSD beta tester, who used a 2018 Model S and 2023 Model Y. To get the most accurate comparison possible, the two vehicles were driven along the same roads side by side. As you can see in the video here, there is a big difference in quality from the 1.2 megapixel hardware 3 cameras compared to the 5 megapixel cameras from hardware 4. The footage from the hardware 4 cameras is much crisper, allowing you to easily read license plates and road signs that are blurred and largely indecipherable in hardware 3. There is also a substantial difference in the rear camera, in which the fisheye effect is much more pronounced, allowing you to see a significantly wider field of view. It should be noted that the rear camera view on the 2018 Model S used in this video does not appear to have as much of a fisheye effect as the one on either our 2019 Model 3 or 2022 Model Y. Other things we noticed in the video is improved image quality in nighttime footage, enhanced brightness control for improved exposure, and more vibrant and true-to-life color representation. Most notably the red in the stop signs actually appears to be red and not orange, like it does on Hardware 3. How this improved quality translates into improvements for full self-driving beta remains to be seen. Elon Musk has said that cars equipped with hardware 4 are about 3 to 5 times more capable than those equipped with hardware 3, but we don't know how much of that, if anything at all, is attributed to the improved quality of the video footage. After seeing this footage, there will of course be the question of whether the cameras can be retrofitted. Based on previous comments from Musk, we already know that Tesla won't offer a hardware 3 to hardware 4 retrofit. But the same applies to updating the cameras, as the hardware 4 side repeaters have entirely different connectors. Moving to the last update, Tesla installs 6th but most significant V4 supercharger station at Giga Berlin. Tesla has added another V4 supercharger station in Europe, this time at Gigafactory Berlin. This brings the number of V4 supercharger stations to 6, but there was something far more significant about this installation than all of the others. We first officially learned of Tesla's latest supercharger posts earlier this year, during Investor Day, with the company making the surprise announcement that they were already building the first station in Europe. It only took a few weeks from that announcement until fans found that installation in the Netherlands. Since then, Tesla has built several more, including stations in Austria, France, and Italy. Germany can now also be added to that list, as Tesla has added V4 supercharger posts at Giga Berlin. However, the significance of this installation is that Tesla replaced the existing V3 superchargers with the new V4 units. This confirms that Tesla is able to convert existing V3 stations to their latest charging technology, and by the looks of it, fairly quickly and easily. There has been a lot of discussion around how quickly Tesla will be able to deploy their V4 supercharger stations. As we have previously reported, V4 supercharging posts feature longer charging cables, making it easier for non-Tesla EVs with non-standard charge port locations to plug in and use the supercharger network. This makes the V4 rollout in North America particularly important, as several major automakers have signed on to adopt Tesla's North American charging standard in their future EVs, meaning, there will soon be a lot more traffic at supercharger stations. With Tesla being able to convert their existing V3 stations to V4, that rollout could be accelerated significantly. However, there is a bit of a catch, as converted stations will also need their supporting infrastructure updated to allow for 350 kilowatt charging speeds, specs which were revealed in planning documents last month. That's it for now. So what are your thoughts about this? Let us know in the comments. Stay tuned at the Electric Arena for all the latest Tesla and electric vehicle news.